Watch this before you head to the big woods. This is with Shane Parker, and we do a deep dive into thermals, how you can use them to your advantage, how deer use them to navigate terrain. This is an excellent conversation for anyone wanting to learn more how to utilize this portion of hunting. And there's some really great tips in here. I learned a lot. I hope you guys do too. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Something that you you talk a lot about on your YouTube channel, and I, I just want to dive into thermals and the most basic high level portion, just because I, I think most people understand what they are and the general theory of it. But just give me the most basic explanation of thermal when it comes to deer hunting and why hunters should pay attention to them. Well, a thermal is basically a a wind flow direction that is generated either by the cooling of the ground or the heating of the ground. Uh, so, um, you know, that, that's basic. That's the basic premise of the thermal. Um, the basic premise of hunting it is you have in the morning, you're going to have dropping thermals to a certain point during the day. Those thermals are going to switch as the ground heats up. And in the afternoon you have a reversal. So, once the ground cools down and the sun sun starts setting, those thermals are going to kick in and reverse. So uh, it's basically lower elevation usually or ele elevations that don't get uh, sunlight that much are going to going to continue dropping thermals or could continue dropping thermals. And you're trying to to base um, your hunting off of that that movement that those switches and thermals are going to are going to basically. Uh, uh, kick off so mm -hmm. and that's what i do a lot of uh, so it's a lot of um, it's a lot of hunting off of drainages ditches uh, water sources creeks branches springs um, shaded out areas that that don't get a lot of sunlight and that's that's a lot of what i do is just try to try to go into areas and scout more for the wind for those thermals dropping a lot of milk weed in those areas figuring out what those thermals are doing at different points and different times of the day and then build a profile of how that could uh, basically benefit me if i'm going in there to hunt yeah i think it's something that has gotten a lot more popularity and, and for good reason because i think uh, it's a great way to get an advantage but i also think and this is my my perception is there's, I feel like there's probably some myths or some, some thermal theories that aren't, uh, but maybe people get wrong. So I guess in your opinion, what are, what are some of the, the biggest shortcomings or common myths that people don't understand when it comes to thermals in relation to hunting whitetails? Well, usually the, the biggest common myth has to do with those rising thermals. Uh, a lot of people assume that once the sun hits the, hits the forest floor, um, that you're going to get a switch in thermals or a lot of people believe that. Uh, that once that sun hits, that thermal's changed, and, and now you're sitting, you're, you're, you know, you don't have to worry about that drop in thermal anymore. Um, that thermal's rising above the canopy and things like that, and, and, and you can hunt off of that. And that's usually not the case. Usually people think it's a, at a certain point in time of the day, like 8 o'clock, thermals are going to switch because the sun's up, you know, the ground's warmed. And there's a lot of factors that play into that. Um, so... I think it's just, that's the biggest myth. The other, I guess, biggest myth is that, um, I don't know, I don't know how to have quite explain a couple things that I've heard about people. Um, it, like I said, it's, they think that, that their thermals rise into infinity, into infinity. Sure. You know, but like once my scent is up with the thermals, it's going completely away from me, you know, and that's probably, you know, I don't know if it's just um, maybe what they've experienced throwing milkweed. As far as you can see, it, it's it's rising, but uh, at some point in time, it doesn't really matter unless unless you've got a strong enough wind current above the canopy um, that takes it, you know, far away and dilutes your scent. It's probably going to fall out somewhere around you at a different point. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what gets people busted a lot of times trying to hunt off of those rising thermals. And yeah. And, and do you think in order to understand that better, is that just time in the stand and, and dropping a lot of milkweed to, to slowly figure that out? Cause I mean, to yeah. your, I have to imagine is there's so many conditions that make a difference to yeah. uh, you yeah. mentioned how much rain or how much wind is above the canopy. What is the wind speed? Is there leaves yeah. on the, on the trees? Is there not leaves on the tree? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's really like, if you think about it, it's almost like you're, you're, there's so many different variables it, it you know, it'll make your head spin, you know, yeah. and a lot of 
sometimes it, it that's why I don't really the only time that I really concern myself with a rising thermal and I, I'm, I'm of the theory that I believe that a lot of our midday movement on those really cold bluebird day mornings where it's really you got a heavy frost and th- this is just my theory based off of all the stuff I've seen on, tra- on trail cameras on those really cold bluebird mornings uh, when you have a heavy frost uh, or on mornings where you have a lot of midday movement. Um, I think that a lot of that is kicked off by that rising thermal. Um, it seems to be that that elevation um, higher up, say in the upper one third, gets a lot of lot of movement in that um, in that time period, that 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. time period when that ground is being warmed up. And that's where a lot of scrapes, a lot of your sign stuff like that is laid down. And I, I, that's really the only time that I'm trying to hunt a rising thermal is in those areas. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing it on a micro level. Like I'm not doing it to where I'm thinking that the entire, you know, area that I'm hunting has a rising thermal. Uh, because that, that it, that's just not the case. It, it, that's one of those deer bounce around to these different drainages and different uh, elevation points and gets them up and moving because each one of them have a different wind profile and a different scent profile in them you know so that they're just basically trying to gain as much information as they can as quickly and as efficiently as they can they're no different than than us working a job you know Mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting so um when you when you mentioned hunting the this is run through an example so people understand so when you're hunting that upper third on a blue bluebird day with the hard frost and they start to rise there let's say 10 o'clock in the morning walk through an example of uh, the wind direction and and how you're set up in coordination to whatever terrain feature you're set up on. So if you're on a south facing slope, and is it a north wind that you're set up on that, or a south wind? Uh, I mean, I guess it just depends on how the sign is laid down in there. But I, like I, in particular, I had one where I killed a buck on um, like three years ago, and uh, he wasn't using. I never got him on this uh, uh, upper one third uh, during the day. Uh, rarely ever like he had a he had a couple scrapes his bed near was up there uh but he he just didn't work that that area very often uh the only time he ever did was on those really really cold and it was it was usually nighttime um images that i was getting him working this this straight line and it led directly into his bedroom and his into one of his bed areas and so we had a real cold um cold morning it was a couple days after thanksgiving it was like 29 28 29 degrees um heavy frost this was a northeast facing um, um, ridge that had a couple drainages that 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 dumped out to the north and the west and he was working uh from the west so he was coming in from the uh coming up the west side drainage Mm-hmm. the one that was facing the west he worked up through a little saddle and then he worked that ridge right down right down to where i was uh working that straight line it was in that was kind of above that saddle along a little uh, uh it was like a an edge uh of this pine thicket where it broke out into some uh, uh open hardwoods so uh he was he didn't like he basically i had him on camera uh in that west facing thermal hub uh till i won't say it was uh 8 30 8 30 9 o'clock in the morning he stayed in that thermal hub like he passed one camera at like uh 7 15 and the next camera up uh is 8 30 so it took him all he stayed in that thermal hub wow. for almost an hour just yeah kinda, if he just staged out made rubs i went back he, he, he kind of freshens up some rubs and scrapes so it wasn't until that sun broke out on that hillside it had been work had been had been basically uh warming that hillside up um he he didn't go into that area until then it was like 8 30 8 45 and so this thing had had sunlight for three hours by that time mm-hmm. and so he was just slowly working his way up through there and he was above like the the scrape line was on my level which was on a little bench and he was working the top of it and so my my area had sunlight for about three hours, but that top had had sunlight for at least forty five minutes longer, and that's where he was working when I caught him. Mm-hmm. So that that's that's kind of the setup I'm talking about is 
is those areas where you can get that those scrapes that are facing back east like it, like if they're facing east and you have a higher ridge above them or if they're facing south like if you had a ridge that's facing south those are the ones you want to look uh i think for that because that that's going to be the areas that get sunlight first are going to warm quicker and those ridge tops that are above those if you have a straight line that's on that east facing side of that uh and say so you have a a, a, a a drainage that's facing west on the opposite side that's a really good setup mm-hmm. uh, it's hard for me to you know it's hard to it's hard to explain right here but yeah no i, I can i can picture that and, and i know you have a lot of videos on your youtube channel too that that walk through a lot of examples too and sometimes it is definitely easier to actually see on the map but i I can I can picture it in my head, and hopefully people listening can too. But if not, I encourage them to go to your YouTube channel because yeah, yeah, there's definitely some things under. You just got to you got you got to think about a north south running running ridge mm-hmm. with a west facing thermal hub or drainage or something. A couple of them facing the west, and those those east facing uh, ridge sides are going to be the ones that are going to get that sun first. And if you're in that pre rut time period, that's a really good place to be. You know, that's kind of the, the things that I'm trying to identify right now or that, that kind of, you know, yeah, that, that, that sign that's yeah. getting popped up yeah. now and, and set up for later. Yep. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, uh, do you, so when you, cause I think a lot of times, and, and this is probably a false perception, but I think sometimes hunters just only look at thermals in relation to how it impacts their hunt versus how the deer are using the thermals and, and you're looking at it from a different perspective where what why are the deer doing what they're doing and how are, how are they using the thermals yeah yeah i think i think we we look at it as and that's that's kind of the way um like i had a friend at hunts um and i grew up with him hunting and and he was that away like i think i learned a lot of this from him but in, in the back of my mind i didn't really put it together when i was you know in my 20s uh but he would he would he would hunt off the thermals a lot like he was the one that taught me about the swirling winds and in the in the in and the drainages and things like that how the deer would use them and i think i don't even know if he was really like he really understood what he was hunting but he knew what he was doing mm-hmm. enough that that i i caught you know enough information off of it and then my, my dad was was a fireman like he worked for the forest service so i used to always study uh, like the fire books and stuff like that, like yeah. heavily into into um, wildfire prevention and wildfire, you know, like so a lot of this thermal stuff, a lot of this wind stuff is stuff that I've learned from him and going through his fire schools and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so I learned a lot of it doing that. And I just, you know, it's kind of like putting all that, that information to use. But yeah, I think a lot of people, they don't consider exactly what the thermals are doing, especially for a mature buck. I don't think does and younger bucks, you know, I don't think they put a lot of stock into it other than I think does use it for entering uh, feeding areas. Sure. You know, but I don't, I don't think as far as their movement that they really consider the, the thermals, but I think mm-hmm. a mature buck is pretty much living off of them in a lot of ways, you know, yeah. especially well, in areas where you don't have a consistent wind. Yeah, and that's uh, I assume the main case where you're at. But you brought up a, a really cool point with the with the fire side of things. Anytime I do a prescribed burn, I'm always paying close attention to see what is that fire doing, where's the smoke going, and how is it interacting. Yeah. And I think that's a really good illustration, especially in the timber setting too, where you see, wow, it burnt really fast, really hot up this hill, and it yeah. smoldered in another spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that's what he, my, my, like I said, my dad spent a lot of time doing that, and I, I tagged along a lot doing that. So we learned, you know, studying exactly why fire didn't burn in this, on this, and, you know, this drainage as hot as it did on this, you know, like it was just, and a lot of times it didn't make, you know, it didn't make sense to me back then, you know, mm-hmm. but now doing it um, and looking back at it and, and, and re re familiarizing myself with it, 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 it has a lot to do with, the, you know, with, cause, cause they, they also studied how would, how would animals react to this? You know that was one of their things uh, too, especially when he when he was doing the fires out west. Is how would uh, how would you know how would it affect the resources that are out on the landscape? So um, they had they had plans in place for for things like that. So it, it's just a really cool you know cool thing that I learned when I was a lot younger that I didn't, didn't realize I would ever be applying to my hunting nowadays. You know. 
this is a question for people that are hunting in the month of October and the month of November. And let's just, we'll just kind of conclude this to the Eastern part, Eastern Midwest type, type of deer hunting, and maybe even Southern where you're at in, in Alabama. But how much do you think thermals change from foliage, full foliage in October versus when the canopy is basically open in mid to late November? Uh, it's going to change a good bit. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just going to change as far as the timing. Um, once you have the, the, the leaf off conditions, the upper elevations are going to warm up quicker. And that warm up period, um, is going to be quicker for the, for the lower elevations, like the drainages and the thermal hubs and things like that, that you're, you're, you're basically hunting off of. So, you know, right now, um, once that sun gets behind um, a, a, at a certain position in the sun, those east facing drainages and thermals and, eat, and ridge facing things like that are dropping thermals a lot quicker. Uh, I noticed that this weekend. Um, I noticed a, a lot of um, a lot of believe it or not, we've had a drought here. So this is one thing that I, I think I, I hadn't really I hadn't really put a lot of thought into but we don't have a lot of soil moisture right now. Hmm. So one thing I noticed this weekend is the rising thermals kicked in a lot earlier on the east facing and north facing slopes. So that's another condition that you have to really pay attention to when you're, when you're working with these thermals is the condition of your soil. Hmm. If you have uh, really damp soil conditions, uh, it's going to take a lot longer to heat that soil up. Uh, so it conversely the opposite right now, we have really, really low, you know, soil condition right now, as far as, um, uh, uh, moisture in the ground. So it's rising a lot quicker in the mornings. Mm -hmm. So in areas where you're, you know, there's a couple areas that I went into, walked into that I thought I would have a, uh, dropping thermal and because it's so dry. Once that sun didn't even need, didn't even have to have the sun. It was just simply the, the air temperature it changed that thermal so much. So there's a lot of conditions that, that, that really, you know, go into, go into it. But, um, that's one thing that I noticed right now is, is soil condition has a lot to do with it, but definitely as you lose that, that foliage, um, then the areas you're wanting to look at are going to be the lower elevations. That's why I think in that initial leaf drop down here in the South, at least, we see once that initial leaf drop hits because it tends to it tends to be your higher elevations that that uh, lose those leaves earlier and then it kind of creeps down into the lower elevations those lower elevation uh, bedding areas tend to light up until there's a complete leaf drop and then it kind of it kind of switches over to finding that thicker cover at that point in time that's interesting i never i've never considered that so basically to to re reiterate as the higher elevation trees lose their foliage, the bottoms get a lot more sign and a lot more activity. So how, yeah. how do you implement hunting bottoms with thermals in mind? Cause that, that, that's, oh, it's tricky, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, and you know, and I, I try to hunt a, the bottoms a little bit. I'm usually trying to find myself on a Creek or something like that. That's really going to have a high thermal draw. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause a lot of times your creeks, if they're, they're running enough water, um, they'll pull that, that thermal all day. It didn't matter. You know, it could be 90 degrees outside and they're still going to be pulling that thermal. So if I'm trying to hunt a bottom, it's going to, it's got to have in that early season, it's got to have a strong water flow. Um, I, I don't, I don't like getting down there in the bottom at all. Uh, there's a ton of sign down in there, but I'm trying to just hunt. I'm trying to hunt, hunt. If I'm trying to hunt off of the bottom, I'm trying to hunt up in elevation where I got at least enough wind flow to get my scent into an area that 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 maybe I walk through, like on my excess or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just trying not to blow out. It. You're, you know, in these elevation, in these ridges and, and valleys and stuff like that, you can't help but blowing deer out because they're a lot of times. Not, what I've seen is they're just moving in 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 random areas now. It's not like a a dedicated path of movement, so. It's kind of give and take. You may have to give up a, a drainage to, to hunt another drainage. You may just have to blow it out in order to, to uh, obtain your objective that you're trying to do. But sometimes it's worth it, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 
like last year, I really noticed this. this. That's what I was saying about the, is I noticed a lot of bucks that were bedding down in these bottoms in that early. And I was like, I wonder why that is. And so I started going back and looking at like my trail camera data from the year before. Uh, and it seemed like until those bottoms got completely leaf dropped, like they were, as, they were equal to the, to the upper elevations that they were holding those bucks longer. So that's something mm-hmm. that, you know, 